<laughs> Hello, people of Biotube. I'm John Smith. And I'm Keith Myers. Ugh. And we are going to talk about Bionicle number three. Web of Shadows. Yeah, brother. Oh, man. This is the one I didn't really see as a kid. And I'm, I'm not disappointed, to be honest. Yeah, Web of uh, Shadows is really one of those that they just threw together because they had to get something out for, what was it, 2005 or 2006? 2005. Yeah. They had to throw something together for 2005 because they didn't want to go into the Dark and Nika storyline yet. <laughs> um, but basically, Web of Shadows is a story where you have the Toa Metru coming back to Metru Nui to find the rest of the Matoran. And what do they come back to? A wasteland. Not in the way of post-apocalyptic, but... More like when you open a shed for the first for the first time in about 20 years, and you see it full of cobwebs. It's basically, Metro Nui basically looks like that. The and, film is basically a huge, you know, time waste. Well, it's not really that. I mean, again, no, you have... because it's, it's, it's entirely unneeded, you know. Mm -hmm. Take space up between when we see them... You know, go to the uh, the island. They when they go to Machu Picchu. You mean? Yeah, it's it's a place in between where they see we see them go there. You know, and well, when they're in still in the Matoran universe. You know. Yeah, but on but as far as well story goes, uh, the Toa Metro get turned into, or I guess they get poisoned with a mutant with a mutagen of some sort that turns them into what is known as Toa Hordika which are basically animal versions of the Metro, and honestly, their design, eh, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm not a fan of it, but really, I never owned it, any of those sets, so I can't say anything. But personally... This, uh, is, this is the first one they had actual Lego sets for, and the Lego figures were just plastic, like, m molded, couldn't move them, you know? Well, you could... Well, it wasn't impossible to move them, but you just hardly had any limb and one of you just hardly had any limb movement in one of the arms. And no, the um, had, had there was you. there was no limb movement. These are just plastic molded. It was made <laughs> up of two bricks. There was the weapon, which was interchangeable silver weapon, and then there was the character, which was a single brick that connected to the weapon. That that was the initial Bionicle minifigure that came out during for this film. I I bought those instead of the Toa figures. Because I said, you know, I don't really care about these figures, um, but these play sets look cool, you know, I'll buy all those. Yeah, well, I guess... So, um, I, the designs of the characters are, are weird, um, and the whole Viserac concept. A <laughs> the Viserac concept is... But all the concepts in this are concept. just weird. All the concepts in this are weird. You got the Viseracs, which are spiders that mutate to people, you know. You got the Toa, who are mutated from... The spiders. You have the spider king, um, who's not really that useful and doesn't really command the spiders. Then you have the spider queen, who has a thing for Makuta, for some reason. Sit around. And freeze, and, freeze uh, Makuta. Is that another one again? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kitangu, he, he's a magical, like, Yoda thing, but he's humongous. He's a magical MacGuffin that basically pops into the story when it's convenient. And he could, uh, and gives some, he speaks some things, like, not really, though. Yeah. Oh, well, then you have the little Rakshi-looking guys that actually look like Rakshi. The Rahaga. Mutated, yes, the Rahaga. They actually look like Rakshi, which is weird. Well, they yeah. look like miniature versions of Rakshi, not, if they were true Rakshi, yeah. they'd be a lot taller. I, I, I mean, yeah, but they, they look like mini Rakshis, which is weird. Yeah. They look more like Rakshi. Than the actual Rakshi, which yeah, yeah. Too bad they didn't didn't do a good job of keeping themselves from being captured, especially when Vakama turns evil. Oops, did I say that out loud? No spoilers. <laughs> this movie and everybody's watching this review has already seen it. Yeah, <laughs> true. There's really no reason to watch this trilogy unless you actually like Bionicle beforehand. To be honest, I can't see and what you, you don't have time to read the comic. Ain't otherwise, you know, because these aren't exceptionally well built stories. This is. The basic idea of this is man or are you a man or a beast, you know, and they have to get, and they have also, to, uh, and they have to, they have to, that's Vakama's story. And then the, um, the Kitangu subplot thing 
is you have to get you have to get in tune with your beastly side. Honestly, uh, and they kind of they the, kind of clash. They kind of clash a bit. Those themes, you know. The Kitagu thing just feels like as a subplot. Feels like it was just shoehorned in there, just like the mask hunt, just like the Toa hunt and Mask of Light, the disc hunt and Nudgeons of Metro Nui, and well, that's really it. Oh man, the, the speeding we even find Katangu, just like we had to find the disc. To be honest, Katangu just looks ugly. Well, that's one thing I will say though that this does do better than the rest of the uh, trilogy. They actually look like the sets. The characters until Legend Reborn, that is. Then they look too much like the set. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then everybody starts wondering who the hell thought it was a good idea to give the Toa teeth. <laughs> I think I think this is the best. This is the best aesthetically, uh, and but the problem the problem is that they're just ugly. These are ugly designs, you know. Yeah, but from a story standpoint, uh... I mean it makes sense, but. You know. Honestly, it's pretty lowball compared to some of the later entries into the series. 